Last week, I called my mom for Mother's Day, and it was a very pleasant call until she said, You know, you're considered an older learner by the government these days. You could get a grant and go to audio school to get certified as something. <laughs> She's gonna be so mad if she ever sees this video. But, um, I'm still in my 20s, thank you very much, government. And, ouch, ma, I got some plans in the works over here. Gotta believe in you, baby boy. Way to bring up such a sentence! All jokes aside, it got me thinking, do I need audio school? The question followed me everywhere, to the grocery store, to the bus stop, on the toilet. Did I make a huge mistake by dropping out of college? Was it a mistake to move to New York City to follow my dreams of becoming a music producer? And was it an even bigger mistake to knock on recording studio doors for an apprenticeship instead of going to audio school? In this video, I want to lay out the pros and cons of going to audio school and I'll lay out the pros and cons of teaching yourself the art and the science of audio and then you can decide. <laughs> you, you mean me? I love a good pro-cons list for making big decisions. Huge disclaimer, I did not go to audio school, so I think it's important to call an audio school graduate who may be able to give us the real pros and cons of audio academia. Hey guys, I'm here with my longtime teacher, mentor, professor in audio engineering, Andy Zerker. Question, it's a little bit of a loaded question. Do you think audio school is necessary to succeed in this industry? I don't know that it ever was. Ever? It just depends on who you know. The thing about audio school is if you go to one that has some sort of reputation, IARSAU, whatever, they help you get good internships. I don't know if it's worth what they charge you for it, but you can pretty much learn the audio on your own. But the internships are hard to get. You got to know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody. Or you got to decide you're going to do the whole thing completely on your own. Like me. Like me. I know people. I just, <laughs> this is what I, this is what I wanted to do. But let me tell you, it's not easy. Let's pretend you're a 18 year old about to leave high school and you're about to decide what you're going to do next. Would you decide to go to audio school in 2023? There's no easy way to answer this. So let's we'll start with this. There's a lot of, a lot of other variables to what your life choices are. Aside from this, that would lead to whether it's a good idea or not. Do you want a bachelor's degree? Okay, then you have to go to OU because it's the only place that offer a bachelor's degree that has a program that's really respected. Or do audio as a minor. You get most of the information you need as a minor. An audio minor is really respected in the trade, mostly because not very many places offer the major. So that is, at the university level, that's what it is. Trade schools are a little bit different because, one, they're kind of expensive. I always kind of assumed that it was like reasonable based on the posters and billboards or like in the subway and stuff, but it's really not. It's like and 100K. Kind of, 100K can buy a lot of equipment. I didn't spend 100K on my studio in New York, oh, including me construction. Think about it. I spent you less know. than 10k on that. So you know, <laughs> if, if you have a hundred, if you have a hundred k to blow, don't do it on politics. Don't blow it on politics. This is an expensive trade, and you have to have your own gear. Otherwise, it's hard to make any money. The person who owns the gear takes a big cut, and they don't even have to do anything. The person who owns the gear, the only thing they're really accountable for is if somebody breaks the gear, like oh, a client yeah. that they booked. Yeah, but even so, fixing you know, that is cheaper like, than 100K. But I do have a, a couple more questions about opinions because you have worked in corporate audio setting. What do you think the worst thing that audio school imparts on its students? Get, and the thing is, if you don't have an apprenticeship before that, then you don't have a lot of practical real world experience. And I'd say I've worked with people who came in through audio schools and they're fantastic because they happened to go to the audio school because they needed the qualification, but this has been their passion since they were a kid. And then I've also had people come in straight out of audio school. They don't understand that they don't have any real world experience because you know they just paid $100,000 for this trade school certification. They're not necessarily wrong for expecting a better than entry level job, but then they suck at it because you got to start with the entry level to build up the skill to handle everything seamlessly. And often you have to do this at like seven in the morning. When you showed up at five, it's corporate, yeah. What, what do you think is more valuable when you're getting hired? Real world experience or a degree? The degree is not really worth anything unless you also have real world experience. If it's just something you decided to do because you didn't want to go to a, to go to college and your parents like will leave you alone because you're in a trade school, you got a lot of catching up to do. And also, it's, like it's hard to make money doing it. You have to really care. 
And if you're not really good at it, you're not going to make any money doing it. Last question is, do you think audio school prepares people for the real world of audio? It tries. Kind of the way I feel about audio school on this particular note is that you just have to have time. You got to put the time in. And you can't stuff all of that into a short program. If we could do a quick pro-cons list, what do you think is a major pro of audio school? Internships, access to internships. They have connections, you know. You know, if you don't have any and you're trying to look, if you're looking for your first foot in the door, there's a foot in the door. You know, you got to make with it, you know, they're not going to hand it to you, but it's something that you can do something with if you're self-motivated, if you're ambitious. And if you're serious, that's something that's really hard to recreate. Another pro. Comprehensive curriculum. Curriculum is, oh, will, like, two. You know, if you, if you have a very untraditional teacher, like, you know, you did sound at your church. If you know that there's a gap in your, in your learning knowledge um, that you're going to need, that is a good way to fix it. You know, like you're going to sit through a lot of stuff that you already know, but that's just reinforcing it. And I generally find that every time there's like a training for audio or whatever that I have to sit through, it's not boring. Do you think maybe that's because you're a nerd? <laughs> it's not boring. Well, I am a nerd. I am a nerd. <laughs> who, who in this trade isn't a nerd? I was just going to say we're all nerd. If you're not a nerd, then good luck. <laughs> Another pro. You meet other people in the trade, honestly. Networking with other engineers. Serious peers. engineers. Yeah, peers. Student peers, yeah. Peers, Well, it's not yes. just the people they introduce you to, but it's the people that you walk in the door and you're both like, you know, before the sorting hat that tells you what, you know, dormitory you're going to be in. Mm -hmm. You know, you're running different people and those th those things matter. I mean, over my head, I need to borrow some microphones. Oh yeah, that's a big favor. Yeah. You get favors just by being yeah. in the in the network and putting yourself out there and supporting the community as well. I think that really wraps it up for the pros. Should we move on to the cons? Number expensive. one. Expensive. Cost. Mm -hmm. It's expensive. We don't, we don't need to talk too much about that. It's, it's your entire life savings and some. Another con. The curriculum is too short a time frame because that's how they get the students in and out. So they cram a lot of information. Any other cons? It doesn't replace just Experience. time on the job. It just does not, yeah. It doesn't undo it, but it doesn't replace it. And often you end up on a job that you can't handle and you didn't realize you couldn't handle it. That's just not good for your brand. Do you have any last minute advice that you'd give to novice aspiring recording engineers or audio engineers in general? The best thing you can do is to get an apprenticeship as early as possible. Do some research, figure out who the engineers are in town. There's usually not that many recording studios, but usually one of them will let you show up and work for free. In terms of professional recording studios, what software do you think is the most important to learn? I don't think you can do just one anymore. I feel like you got to pick two and be really good at them. So I use Pro Tools and Logic. If you've liked this video so far, please like subscribe and comment and let us know what you want to see next from us so thank you very much andy and we'll catch you later now let's get into the pros and cons of skipping audio school this next section is based on my personal experience i did not go to audio school and i built my own learning path as a self-taught diy music producer i moved to new york and started knocking on studio doors until i found a studio willing to give me an apprenticeship What's up, buddy? Hey, I know you're hungry. Hey, go. turns out there is a lot of opportunity for an aspiring producer to learn on the job in the city heck even when i opened my own studio i was desperate to find an apprentice, but you have to have the right attitude to make a DIY apprenticeship work. If you can hack it, there are a lot of pros. Pro number one, the biggest pro is cost. I got my knowledge for free 99 and I love free things almost as much as I love pro cons lists. And two, you get to learn in a very hands-on way, which actually gives you an upper hand on a lot of engineers who go to audio school. There's nothing like real world experience. Three, teaching yourself is rewarding in ways that go beyond knowledge. It gives you a deeper why than most engineers who just want a steady job or paycheck. I made this for you! Four, networking feels a lot more like collaboration in the DIY scene. And five, you learn much more than just audio. You learn video, After Effects, business ownership and management, lead generation, SEO for websites, SEO for social media, and so much more. The cons, 
it is grueling work to learn without a curriculum. I had many mentors in the craft, but 90% of your learning as a self-taught engineer is solo. YouTube, books, online articles, and workshops are the self-taught engineer's best friend. Being solo is kind of lonely and scary, and only the bravest and most tenacious of engineers can pull it off. Steady income is slow to grow. It takes a lot of effort over a long period of time to grow an artist career without the basics that you learn in college for the technical side of the craft. Probably the toughest pill to swallow is you have no certificate, no certification that states you are qualified for a job. So it's difficult to get a technical job without good references, even if you are the best candidate. I am personally really pleased with my journey as a DIY full-time music producer. I've worked like every job you can imagine as an audio guy. I made beats, I busked in the subways, I completed my own apprenticeship track, moving all the way on to becoming a junior engineer and a resident engineer at a recording studio in New York City. Simultaneously, I started a recording business of my own and operated out of my bedroom for years walk -a, walk -a, walk -a, walk -a, walk until I opened my first ever commercial recording studio where I recorded hundreds of artists. And now I'm writing a book on how to record yourself from home, giving me the credibility that I lack from not having a certification from some school. It kind of feels like I'm writing my thesis and finishing grad school without the institution. And I kind of like that the man. Frankly, these days, people care less about how much school you have and more about how proficient you are in certain DAWs and how dependable and consistent you are as a person. Anyone can become proficient in a program. You don't need school for that. But standing out is something you learn from getting your hands dirty and being reliable and responsible to your word on the job. Can I trust you? Can I trust you? Answer me, can I trust you? I have to be able to trust you with my life. Do you understand? But truly, it's up to you whether you need audio school. Everyone learns differently, and there are many roads to truth. I'm a trial by fire kind of guy. I like to fuck around and find out. So the DIY route took me exactly where I needed to go to find the success that I wanted. But you may need structured learning to become the artist of your dreams. That is okay too. Take the path that you need to take to succeed. Oh, back to school. Back to school to prove to dad that I'm not a fool. The truth is, my mom wants to see me succeed too, and school is the way her generation found that success. But maybe, success doesn't look the same as it used to. Speaking of success, next week I'm dropping a video about why my music career failed the first time. It's going to be full to the brim with some thoughtful advice for aspiring full-time artists and producers, and I'll link it here in case you want to know where I went wrong. And I'll be real with you, it wasn't because I dropped out of college to follow my own path. It's a lot deeper than that. Hope to see you there. Thanks for watching. Peace.